students today we are going to end the chapter we have already studied uh, regarding diversity what is living world how are organisms classified according to their binomial nomenclature what is the, what are the rules of binomial nomenclature and how did uh, these binomial nomenclatures help everyone in the world to study about various kinds of plants species across the world so i just go through a brief introduction of all the topics which we have covered earlier so initially it was what is biology told you already it is living study of living organisms it is called as biology and here in our subject we are study we are going to study about the plants mainly uh, based on the plant study of plants called as botany so next what is living world i mean various kinds of organisms live in various places so all these organisms living in various places what are these characteristic features of these organisms living in various places why i mean how do they live what is their habitat how do they survive all these will be covered in the living world next characteristics what are the characteristics five characteristics growth reproduction metabolism cellular organization and consciousness these are the main five characteristics basic characteristics you can say it is the basic requirement of an organism to be developed or to be living okay next growth increase in mass and number the production increase in progeny or you can say next generation production of next generation next metabolism it is nothing but surviving chemical uh, division of long i mean big of uh, chemical molecules or compound chemical molecules into small chemical molecules or simple chemical molecules in a pre definition then i mean conversion of compound molecules into simple molecules you can see examples photosynthesis and respiration next we have cellular organization how cellular cells have been organized in particular body or in particular plant cell in this in, in our body it is atom to molecule to cell to tissue to organ to organ system then to a whole organism whereas in plants roots leaves and the stem divide to form tissues and then those tissues comprises of cells all these cells completely combine to form a single plant plant next consciousness consciousness is nothing but a sense of anything just we can have that consciousness when we when we touch some hot material what we do we just take off our hand that is nothing but consciousness each and every living organism has a consciousness in fact plants do also have some consciousness okay next diversity we have various various hundreds and thousands of kinds of organisms living in this world so what are the varieties of these organisms Uh, living on this earth, we, until now around 1.7 to 1.8 billion species have been known throughout the world. And how do we classify uh, all these uh, plants and animals according to their nomenclature, according to their characteristic features? It's been studied. Next, name nomenclature is given by Carlos Linnaeus. And what are the rules are given by ICBN in case of botany and ICZN in case of zoology. Okay. Next, rules of nomenclature. There is two, two. There are two names: specific name and genus name. specific name uh, genus name should be written in capital letters whereas specific name should be written in small letters and if it is hand written it should be underlined if it is printed it should be written in italics next taxonomy what is taxonomy study of principles and procedures of classification what are the principles and procedures for classification of a single organism is been studied in the uh, topic called as taxonomy okay next systematics what is systematics it's a branch of biology which catalogue which is cataloging plants animals and other organisms into categories based on their name uh, based on their classification like name identification categorization and nomenclature next hierarchy uh, what are species i already told you species are nothing but group of organisms group of organisms with similar qualities are called as species comes under a single species example panthera tigris leo solanum tuberosum solanum nigrum whereas genus is group of species comes under with similar characters comes under family group of genus together are comes under single family or group of families comes under single character called as fam order next class group of orders together comes under single family single class called as uh, i mean comes under a category called as class example mammalia which includes monkey gorilla and gibbon and carnivora and phylum is nothing but group of all the classes together comes under a division called as phylum or division next kingdom all the phylum or divisions together comprises of kingdom there are two kingdoms animal kingdom and plant kingdom next now we are going to study 
about how these classifications i mean from where do we study all these classifications uh, for example i'll give you a basic example if you want to know a uh, meaning of some word some some difficult word okay you have got some difficult word what do we what will you do you will just google it of course nowadays in our technology we will just google it but initially when we when the google was not there or you can say when the phone was not there or internet was not there, what you people used to do basic thing used to have a dictionary is is it we used to have a dictionary we used to search in the dictionary that ha huh, this spelling has got some word we have got some word and this word mean, means something like that for example nutrition you have got a word called nutrition and you don't know what's the meaning of it so you will go to dictionary open it the n n letter and you search for it search for it and find the meaning of it is it so similarly how do we know that plants and animals whatever we are studying have got in these categories nothing but these are the taxonomical aids we can say taxonomical aids uh before going to that i have a few examples for you people uh, according to the taxonomical categories that is man its biological name is homo sapiens genus name homo vera family hominidae and order primata class mammalia phylum of division is cordata okay next house fly musca domestica its biological name genus is musca family is muscidae and order is diptera whereas class consists of insecta and its phylum consists of arthropoda next mango magnifera and mangifera indica mangifera its genus name family is anacidiaceae order is pindales whereas class dicotyledon and family or uh, phylum or division is angiosperm angiosperm uh, flower producing plants next weed triticum estivum <coughs> triticum estivum triticum is the genus name whereas family is poaceae order is poaceae class monocotyledon angiosperm monocotyledon i told you by monocotyledon single cotyledon not double cotyledon if it is two cotyledon it is dicotyledon if it is single cotyledon it is monocotyledon next sure. next it is taxonomical aids what are taxonomical aids simply it is called as study of living organisms carried out by their classification into comprehensible categories depending upon the specific attribute attributes which is called as taxonomy in simple terms it is called as studying of all the organisms it might be a plant or animal or any organism through some source through some source is called as taxonomical aid these taxonomical aids help in an individual to study about all the characteristic features its classification its uses advantages disadvantages what are its merits demerits everything okay so throughout the years scientists have created numerous strategies and procedures that assist in taxonomical studies such such strategies are called as taxonomical guides or taxonomical aids in uh, in old mean in prior years like in prior years various various scientists have been developed various books or various studies so all those studies whatever they have studied have been written in particular books or um, manu manuscripts or anything so those manuscripts have been taken by today's world uh, researchers and been studied about those organisms okay so all those organisms who are interested in some particular plant how do you know that this particular plant is useful to you or harmful to you those are been written from your uh, ancestors or you can say from your old scientists and scientists have already written about these plants in some of particular books so we can just add uh, take those books as our references and study about those plants or any whatever we are going to study okay next these are the systems and strategies used to store and safeguard information and additionally samples of different plants and animals what is mean by that this is nothing but samples of various plants and animals you can say uh, i hope you have seen some uh, museums you can see some um, some specimens specimens placed with animals okay so all those animals which are placed with specimens have been initially uh, given a great opportunity for us to know about more, to know more about the living organisms which are which are not present there basic example a dinosaur did you see it did i see no we didn't see how do we know that there, there is a dinosaur that we have seen that through the books or movies or through museums or somewhere else okay so how these books or museums or these uh, herbariums or you can say these uh, places where we find the extinct species which we haven't seen so those places 
play a major role in studying the fossils in studying the endangered species as well as in studying the upcoming species or present species okay so these help in identification naming and grouping of organisms various illustrations of taxonomical aids include zoo parks museums keys botanical gardens and herbariums keys i'll uh, tell you in detail about what is keys you'll get it. it's not a key which we use zoological parks basic knowledge we know it we see zoo it's basically simply called as zoo parks next museums we have called we have one in our city that is salaji museum botanical gardens we have we have seen many many botanical gardens where plants are grown for scientific study as well as for uh, health purpose for a good purpose okay herbariums are the sheets or you can say this is a paper sheet which where plants or useful plants or study of plants is being kept in a particular manner so that it can be studied for a further use okay so taxonomical aids are the collection of samples of preserved organisms which help in extensive research for the identification of various taxonomic hierarchy simple term you can understand it very clearly that taxonomical aids what are they used they collect the various samples and preserve it in a way uh, in a particular clear manner so that it can be used for the research purpose for a further generation okay classifying organisms into various categories needs a lot of field and laboratory study of course this is an essential process because taxonomic categorization helps in identifying many organisms necessary in various fields like agriculture industries bio resources etc so how do you know that this plant is particularly important for you to do? this uh, resource is particularly very important for you through these books, through these books which are present inside the uh, inside your museum or in a herbarium or in a garden through those literature books or through those plants we will be knowing that these plants are very useful for us and they, they have various useful categories in case of agriculture and industries and also bio resources okay so next the taxonomical aids are the main source which helps us in studying the related relative level of a group of organisms the taxonomic hierarchy and the taxonomic rank what does that mean it means like this uh, taxonomical aids help us to know about where at which place your plant stands okay your plant stands at which place or you can say you are at which level of organization okay which level of organization your plants or your animal stands in the hierarchy in the taxonomic hierarchy if it is a 10 number uh, box for example it is a 10 number box so where is your plant standing in that 10 number which is is it 1 or 10 or 9 or 5 whatever so through these books or to these uh, and taxonomical aids we can identify that these are the categories through which we can uh, learn more about our plants or animals okay next so this is a basic thing what is taxonomic types of taxonomic and we can say simply taxonomical aids you have various categories it is botanical gardens herbariums monographs museums zoological parks keys flora and manuals okay next now starting with taxonomic uh, herbaria types of taxonomic aids you have various types of these are the types of taxonomic aids so in detail we will be studying about each taxonomic aid okay so first one herbaria what is herbarium it is a storehouse of collection of preserved plant species plant specimens are preserved in the form of herbarium sheets which are prepared by drying pressing and preserving the samples on sheets how do we do this you have a herbarium sheet in your second years when you when you complete your first year and you come to your second year at the end of your second year you have a practical lab in which you will be doing this herbarium on your own so how do we do this you have a 29 43 sheet 29 and 43 sheet a long sheet you can say 29 length and 43 width so that will be the standard sheet throughout the world so that sheet will be taking and a particular plant You, whatever plants are present in your syllabus for example i'll give you a basic example of datura you have a datura you be in detail you will be studying about datura datura is the main plant in your syllabus so you will be taking a datura leaf with a flower with a stem you can see a small stem with a flower uh, you can see there so you will be attaching that uh, onto the paper before attaching what you will do you will remove all the moisture all the moisture from the leaf or from the flower should be removed how do you remove it you just have to pick, keep that flower or a leaf in between two butter papers or you can say two papers which soak complete moisture and you, you need to press it 
okay you need to press or something some hard material should be kept on it so that complete moisture is removed when the complete moisture is removed those leaves or stem whatever you have taken is been placed on that sheet or you can say that booklet and at the left at the right side corner you can say you can see down in any sheet uh, last column you can see down you have small box like structure in that box you will be writing about the name of the plant its class i mean its family its biological name from where you have collected it the name of the collector date when you have collected it and what is its habitat once again i'll tell you herbariums are nothing but these are the sheets in which plants are been pressed okay plants have been pressed by removing the moisture after removing the moisture these plants are placed on the white sheet which is 29 to 43 that 29 to 43 diameter okay these plants uh, after placing it you will be writing about the plant at the right hand side bottom of the sheet okay what you will write about its name its biological name family where you are collected from its locality or uh, locality or habitat and uh, date of the collection okay so these herbarium sheets carry all the information about the respective specimen that's what i told you okay next next starting with botanical garden these are the gardens in which specific plants are grown and are labeled according to their taxonomy what does that mean it is nothing but uh, it's a place where all the plants or specifically plants usually plants which are very useful to us are being grown or plants which are very rare extinction plants endangered plants are being grown in a particular area so that uh, it is it is used for some I mean entertainment as well as it is also used for research purpose as well as study purpose also okay so the main purpose of botanical gardens is to identify the plant species under consideration plant species which are been uh, which cannot be seen very uh, i mean which can be seen very rarely have been grown in particular areas okay the garden is generally defined as a place of growing flowers fruits or vegetables but there is a difference between a garden and a botanical garden see there but the botanical garden is an educational institution for scientific workers and general public or layman to awake an enlightened interest in plant life by growing various plants what do you what do you get you will always uh, always get a plus point isn't it we get oxygen we get fruits we get vegetables etc so there is a difference between a garden and a botanical garden botanical gardens are mainly used for study purpose next so i tell you about a botanical initially the in india the very old botanical garden named royal botanical garden was present in Col in calcutta <clears throat> initially it was called as calcutta so in calcutta it, the name was royal botanical garden later on after the i mean after years have been grown then it was named as the indian botanical garden the very old name of the garden was royal botanical garden later on the name changed to the indian botanical garden but now present it is called as acharya jagdish chandra bose botanical garden present name of the garden is acharya jagdish chandra bose botanical garden and it is located in howrah kolkata west bengal okay it is located in howrah kolkata and west bengal in west bengal so what is uh, now what why it is so famous this botanical garden that is acharya jagdish chandra bose botanical garden what is it famous for you can see first thing you have various things but first thing the great banyan tree uh, banyan tree the botanical name is ficus bengalensis the great banyan tree why it is so famous for this? you can see banyan tree anywhere why is it, what is the great thing is it is 250 years old can you imagine 250 years old uh, banyan tree and 2800 crop roots have been evolved from this banyan tree what is crop roots is nothing but uh, you, i hope every one of you have seen banyan trees you can see a, from a branch from a single branch you will be having a roots roots will be going downwards okay when it goes downwards it attacks again into the soil and a new plant is grown okay from a single plant when well, this thing this is a single plant from a single plant a leaf a root a stem is been bent and roots are formed from here okay after the roots are formed from here these roots again go into the soil and develop into a new plant okay so like that 2800 crop roots have been formed until now in that plant which is 250 years old okay and 
this plant is spread out in an area of 1000 uh, sorry 14500 square meters of that garden you can see it is very 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 huge place okay 14500 square meters of that huge land has been occupied by the uh, banyan tree okay this is the this is one of the this is one of the category why it is famous for the second thing is pandanus pandanus is a plant which consists of multiple root caps and its stem roots okay you have multiple root caps what is root caps you just know it next third one is victoria amazonica in this also it is also called as jane water lily plant it is also famous this botanical garden is also famous for jane water lily plant which consists of large leaves of around 2 to 3 meters of around 2 to 3 me meters which can occupy around 4 to 6 people can sit in that leaf just imagine 4 to 6 people can sit in that leaf that chain will be the leaf okay so next uh, guard, next uh, uh, garden will be national botanical garden which is present in lucknow so uh, i just told you about ficus bengal and this, this is how it looks it is like this you can see the stems which, which are uh, in between those are the crop roots okay this that is not the main stem that is the crop roots so now what happened initially uh, in between these days the main trunk you can say from where the tree has been uh, positioned the main trunk has been infected by some infection so that main trunk has been removed and the whole tree is only dependent upon these crop roots okay the main trunk has been removed due to some infection but the plant is still surviving just on these crop roots okay so and one more water lily you can see the base those are not the plates those are leaves okay this called as leaves water lily jane water lily okay and next you can see pandanus tubus what i told you is root cap root cap you can see down i have written a tip uh, root tip is the uh, below the root root you can see some uh, purple color structure that purple color structure is called as root cap you can see those root caps in the picture also so this pandanus dubius is very famous for various kinds of root caps okay next the functions of botanical gardens it acts as a outdoor laboratories you can see it mean outdoor laboratories it acts as a many various kind of laboratory which is present in outdoor then initiate studies on the tropical and temperate ecosystems and their biodata in biodata before they are lost to science and preserve such systems before they are lost we can have extinct species and grow them in a particular area serve as centers for gene pools or germplasm bank nothing but hybrid technology growing of hybrid technology economically important plants next establish nature centers and youth museums to focus attention on destruction of tropical and temperate ecosystem environmental degradation to have awareness about how to grow plants and what are the importance of plants okay maintain less attractive or abundant ornamental plants train city arborists in uh, in the plantation of trees in urban areas you can train some people to grow plants next collaborate university and others to conduct research in environmental biology that's what do in the research purpose organize educational programs to create environmental awareness among children students and train teachers in environmental education centers of conservation of endangered and rare species botanical gardens provide living plant materials for research that's what Uh, you can have many materials which are present in botanical gardens and take them off and have the have your research completed next next you have museums museum what is museum you are you have a great knowledge about museums it's a biological museum are found in schools and colleges like the biology laboratory we have our like, biological museums in our college itself or school itself okay so um, what I mean what does these contain these contain some uh, pressed materials or you can, you can see there some extinct plants or some you know, new plants have been kept in a paper sheet or in a glass sheet so that you can see those plants and have an idea about what are the classification which family does it belongs to and what are the uses of those plants okay and um, they may be dried and preserved that's what the plants cannot be put directly because it contains moisture and the tissues get damaged so the plants are usually dried and then preserved birds and large animals how do the birds and large animals are kept they are usually stuffed stuffed in sense the inside organs of the birds are been removed and they are stuffed with some material so chemical material or some useful material so that they can look as in okay the external structure looks as in so the materials have been stuffed large birds and large animals have been stuffed with some material before preserving and how do insects are kept insects they are pressed and they are pinned okay pinned in the boxes they are there uh, 
can example butterfly you can open the wings of a butterfly and paint those butterflies into a box like material okay and also we sometimes find find some skeletons in the specimen boxes you have a glass jar collect structure in which you can see the animal is being painted to a some uh, some glass material or some box like material some cardboard material and on the i mean on the bottle it is written about the animal its name its class where it is belongs to its habitat etc so next types of museums you have fine arts stunting painting drawing sculptures and architecture like olden history you can say basically history all the historical monuments have been present in the fine arts historical museums same thing uh, various uh, historical events periods personalities their weapons their jewelry statues artifacts made of stones and other materials have been placed in historical museums okay next year science and technology it is the representation of evolution of history science and technology and also fossils and dinosaurs if you have uh, i'll give you example billa science museum you have it in lakhni kapoor you can see there various uh, organisms like uh, animals have been placed and various space technologies have been placed there then museum house it is located in the birthplace of famous persons such as savarmati ashram museum house is nothing but it is a place where a person a famous person is being like his house his birthplace is called as a museum house next archaeological museum is it contains all the objects of history related to history next general museum contain more uh, more than one object and therefore these museums are called multidisciplinary museums example zoological museum next zoological parks i know it to tell you about what is zoological park we have already visited it hundred of times i guess you are every one of you visited zoological park is present in nehru zoological park is present in hyderabad so these are the places where animals are kept in a particular cage like structure or you can see in a open area where they are been uh, given a particular good habitat good place good behavior so they, and they they are kept under a natural habitat so that they can have a home like structure okay and also various various endangered species or extinct species are also kept in these parks next what are the functions of zoo parks primary object of zoos are the charge of scientific societies in the study of animals main main reason is for the study of animals or it is for the study of various organisms purpose of zoological society of london has stated in its royal charter this the advancement of zoology and animal physiology and introduction of new and curious subjects of the animal kingdom that is that but various new species are also kept in the zoological parks society has been modeled for many other zoological societies throughout the world in the 19th century the emphasis on the investigations carried out in scientific zoos was mainly about taxonomy comparative anatomy and pathology that is nothing but in the initial days like in 19th century the zoos were made major source for study of taxonomy comparative anatomy and pathology pathology is nothing but study of all the uh, diseased organisms okay so how do you study all these organisms if the all if the organ you cannot go in a wild forest and go and study about the organ isn't it so to study about all the organisms do it is a place where you can go and have a look about all the organisms in one particular area about all the wild animals okay so today the opportunities for scientific inquiry are much wider and a few societies have established special research institutes as well next key so now coming to key key is nothing but it's a device which when properly constructed and used enables a user to identify organism i know you people have got idea of key that is not this key it is like a uh, a manual you can say a simple manual where you have uh, various categories and you can come closer to the identification of an organism basic example i'll give you you can see at the example stage uh, before going to example i'll just give you key always have a two statements okay two statements are present in a single key which are called as couplet whereas single statement are called as leg okay two statements are called as couplet a single statement is called as leg okay so example for example you have found a single organism you don't know what it is okay so if only the organism is one cell organism then you need to go to couplet number 2 number 1 you can see there that is couplet number 1 and next you can see number 2 behind that okay that is couplet number 2 but if the organism is multicellular organism, the question mark is you don't know what it is so if organism is single cell organism then you need to go to couplet number 2 Now, if the organism is multicellular organism, then you need to go to couplet number three. Okay? Then, if the organ, if the organism which you found, it is in this nucleus is present. If the nucleus is present in that organism, then that comes under the category of protista. Okay? 
and that is nothing but all unicellular organisms and eukaryotes are present if the nucleus is absent okay if the nucleus is absent it is monera that is nothing but prokaryote okay let's tell you once again couplet number 1 is only c i mean how many cells do you have in the organism it is couplet number 1 whereas in couplet number 2 you have nucleus presence and absence of nucleus if it is present it is protista if it is absent it is monera then if for example if the nucleus is present then it is unicellular organism you can identify it and keep it aside if it is nucleus is absent and you found that it is a prokaryote then you need to go to couplet number 3 okay then go to couplet number 3 then if it is autotrophic it is belonging to the kingdom plantae and if it is heterotrophic heterotrophic in sense autotrophic in the sense the organisms which can prepare their own food okay heterotrophic the organisms which depend on other organisms to prepare the food or the for the food so if it is autotrophic it belongs to kingdom plantae and if it is heterotrophic then you should to go to couplet number 4 okay then what is couplet number 4 if it is motile it belongs to animal kingdom and if it is non motile that is not motile non motile is motile is moving moving from one place to other place non motile is immovable which cannot move from one place to other place if the organism belongs to non motile category then it belongs to category of fungus then further when you go to next couplet then you can come closer to the identification of the organism okay so key is nothing but it is a general statement with contradictory and complementary characters together placed to so that you can identify the character identify the organism in a simpler manner okay this is most important taxonomical aid next next you have monographs monographs are nothing but information of single taxon single taxon for example you can say a single uh, plant kingdom only a single plant kingdom or only a single animal kingdom information only about a single kingdom is called like, comes under a category called monograph used it is mainly used in the classification purpose manuals we can see a book it is a kind of book where single have this which contains a description of species in an area in one particular area what are the organisms or what are the species present so about description about all those organisms present in manuals it is what is the information i mean what is the use of it for getting information and identification of the name You can see uh, you have manuals for your botany and zoology in your lab where you have uh, names and its classification and identification everything about it. Then flora. Flora is nothing but plants. Actual account of habitat and distribution of plant in particular area is nothing but particular this area. Suppose this is the area, Sikandrabad is the area. So what are the plants grown in Sikandrabad area? So that particular uh, category of uh, studying of those uh, plants of this area is comes under category of flora. so these are the various categories i mean these are the various taxonomical aids of uh, various taxonomical and types of taxonomical aids which are useful in studying about the plant species their extinct species okay so with this we will be finishing our chapter 1 and i have given you a link in this uh, end of this video you can see a link of pdf document which contains question answers i want you people to write all the question answers in your uh, put a book i mean keep a class book or a plain long notebook where you can start writing all the question answers of chapter 1 okay you have bsaqs saqs and laqs all these are covered in the link open it and you have to start writing all the answers study also start writing bsaqs saqs and laqs then study all the bsaqs you will have an idea about what is present in the whole chapter okay start studying i want everyone of you to complete the chapter 1 question answers in your notebooks thank you